Thank you. Please, uh, Janet. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning and welcome to ISIS Thailand's uh, public forum on the empire strikes back, what's left of the Thailand youth protest uh, movement. First, to kick off this discussion, uh, let me give you a quick recap of the past year in Thai politics. In late February 2020, anti government French mob started to take place on university campuses in reaction to the dissolution of a Future Forward Party, which had been the third largest winning party in the March 2019 polls. The initial campus protests were interrupted by the coronavirus pandemic and consequent restrictions and lockdown in March to May uh, 2020, but resumed with popularity and intensity in June. Over subsequent months, the youth protest movement gathered stem and transformed into an anti-establishment drive. It first called for a halt to official harassment, constitutional amendment, and new polls. Later, three demands became, became the re resignation of the prime minister, a new constitution, and reform of monarchy. Street protests peaked in October to November 2020, involving tens of thousands of mostly young demonstrations, uh, mirrored by similar activity on campuses. By December 2020, as the second COVID-19 wave struck, the youth protest movement lost momentum, undermined by internal divisions and inability to broaden and the arrest of the key leaders. By early 2021, the movement appears a shadow of itself. This public forum intends to analyze and locate the underpinnings and dynamics of what is left of uh, the movement in the forwarding fashion to see whether it still has traction or otherwise. By the most accounts, Thailand's youth protest movement over the past year has lost steam. Its key leaders had been charged on anti-monarchy grounds and jailed without bail. While many others are demoralized, still on the move, but in lesser number. On the other side, the incumbent centers of power have reasserted control and put down what at its peak was the most powerful and vigorous anti-establishment movement Thailand has seen in decades. With grievances and young generation on campuses, and streets and the abuses and excesses of the state still persist. The status quo is now set to prevail for the unforeseeable future. The big question now is whether the young generation will be able to regroup and regain traction and the older and powerful elites will be willing to adapt to new demands and expectation. It could be that the youth movement is no longer a political force to be reckoned with. Or perhaps the movement is learning or by doing and will be back down the road. The public forum will tease out some of these dynamics and trends. I would like to thank the Frederick Norman Foundation for supporting this forum and to all the speakers uh, which is uh, Ms. Sukriya 
วันนาณุวัฒน์ the co-founder of the Free Gender Thailand and m o p f e s t and the third year student undergrad uh, at j u l a n u n g k o n University Mr. b u n k e n u n p a u t o n g former NAT co-chair coalition of Salaya Student Mahidol University uh, associate professor w i e n g l a t n e t i p o uh, who are here now uh, the deputy dean of the student affairs Faculty of Political Science, Chulangkorn University, uh, Mr. Chatulon c h a i s a n g uh, former uh, Deputy Prime Minister and former Minister of Education and former student leaders in 1970s. And uh, I think this will be worthwhile session for all of you here uh, in this room, uh, as well as uh, audience uh, online everywhere. Thank you, and let me return the floor to Ajahn Titinan. Thank you very much, Kappa Ajahn. Uh, please let me invite Kun Chaturon. You can sit uh, up here, please, Ajahn Wingrat, uh, Professor Wingrat. Uh, the traffic is uh, not so good this morning. I think uh, our really our two students are still on the way. Uh, one coming from from a bit a bit far. Um, So, as a way of laying the groundwork for for this public forum, uh, and uh, to our audiences online, if you have any difficulty, please uh, send us uh, messages, and we'll try to fix uh, fix whatever the problem is. To lay the groundwork for this public forum, I'll just say a couple of things. Uh, first, you know the uh, the title, of course, is the Empire Strikes Back. We've seen uh, a lot of the uh, kind of uh, uh, the state uh, state authorities have. Uh, Undertaken a series of measures, uh, including the charging and uh, and jailing of a number of student leaders, and so you know for 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 Thailand this is a very uh, tumultuous period in a way. But uh, we were thinking that maybe they really lost steam this uh, movement. But last March 24th, I think it gave them some uh, some positive spirit. Uh, there were more protesters that turned up on March 24th. So it looks like the, there's still some oxygen, some traction uh, left among the, um, the the student protest movement, even though the the main leaders uh, have been have been jailed. And second, I'll just say that uh, you know Myanmar is the big news in the region. Uh, Cambodia has been in the news, but this has been crowded out. Thailand has been crowded out uh, by Myanmar. So Myanmar is is sucking all the oxygen. Uh, for the region, and I know that our international friends, uh, they don't have a lot of uh, bandwidth to look at country by country. So whatever stands out, and Myanmar has has stood out. Uh, but nevertheless, I'll just say that uh, you know this public forum is intended to uh, still keep some some focus on Thailand. I think for us, if you want to see, you know, which which place is worse, I, I asked my students yesterday, Cambodia. Um, they basically have wiped out the opposition. It's a one-party rule with uh, some polls, uh, elections, Thailand election, and a kind of a control outcome, uh, and Myanmar election and complete robbery. So, which which is worse? I ask my students. Uh, you know, Laos and Viet Vietnam not included. So, there are different answers, and then most of the answer says Thailand is worse. So, my answer is. It depends where you are. If you're Cambodia, Cambodia is the worst. If you're in Thailand, Thailand is the worst. If you're in Myanmar, Myanmar is horrific. So um, uh, on that note, let me just just uh, introduce our uh, speakers. We have a four-member um, lineup today, and uh, they've spoken here before, you know, last year. So I thought it would be good to kind of take stock of the past year, uh, of the past six months, especially of uh, protests, student-led. Protest movement uh, in Thailand, and uh, the the height of it, of course, uh, as the dean uh, Professor e k mentioned uh, in his uh, opening remarks, you know, in the September, August, September, October, November, there was a build up of the the protest movement, and I think uh, it reached its peak maybe October, November, and then December we had the the second COVID um, round or wave. And then uh, it, it interrupted the momentum a little bit. And then uh, early this year, it looked like 
it really was just uh, very small numbers until March 24th. Uh, so I'll, I'll just come to the, we have two students uh, who have been uh, instrumental and I think who've been among the, the student leaders of this uh, protest movement. Uh, the first is uh, uh, Sukriya Wananuwat, uh, uh, who is actually a student here at the uh, Faculty of Education at Jolanokon University. And she's in her third year now, third year. Um, and and she, she knows her friends and fellow student leaders. And maybe you can tell us a little bit, maybe we'll start with you if that's okay. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about where is the movement now? Well, you know, uh, uh, and we know that the demands have not been met and uh, a lot of you have been uh, charged and so on. Um, where, where, where are we headed? Uh, what are some of the dynamics, the underlying dynamics now? Is it, is it correct to, to look at the movement as kind of a split, maybe? Uh, there have been some, uh, I noticed, uh, you know, some splits within even institutional uh, fragmentation a little bit. Maybe the Tamasat University uh, sees itself as uh, at the forefront of the, of the protest movement because Tamasat is the traditional um, hotbed, the t traditional platform of liberalism, progressivism in the past. Uh, and then there's also personalities and even different names. There's uh, the free youth movement and there used to be the free people movement. And now there's a Rasadon group. So the different uh, columns. Uh, so where are we, uh, Sukriya? Okay, uh, first let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sukriya Wanayuwa. I'm come from Faculty of Education in third year. And uh, now um, I am uh, the leader of uh, the co-founder of Free Gender Thailand that uh, the uh, gender equality movement, also uh, Nisit Jula Party in Jula Longkorn University, that uh, movement and Mofis, uh, the and also I am also Rasadon, the the main movement in Thailand now. Uh, in the past, I am as an organizer and coordinator under the Amira group of uh, Rasadon. The past, the past year has been a huge trial and error of the youth-led movement. The protesters are experimenting on different types of protests, the various responses from the government. As you see, like, we got uh, uh, no, like, no leaders movement and uh, the, uh, the leader movement like uh, Tamasat, that they have room, penguin, and other leaders. So, what have been like key challenge that we are facing over past years is diversity of people in the movement. The various people protest on various topics, like ranging from same-sex marriage to BLOs. This become a pro pro problems. Uh, when we need solidarity within the movement, many of the protesters are now being detained in in prison. And as as a result, the movement has lost some of the, its momentum due to the people being unsure on that. Like you you may see it, uh, you may saw that um, people come to uh, demonstration like less and less. And, uh, nowadays, like we got, since last, uh, like Talu 5, you see that people in, in prison is only like 100, but that's it all of the people in that Talu What to do next? Um, as for really, I mentioned this, uh, the movement, is diverse and is comprised of people from all age and genders with various topic on the protest in mind. Therefore, there is a sense of division within the movement. However, while uh, there is a different, we all still stand on a common ground with our three key demands. The monarchy reform, redrafting the constitution, and resignation of Prayutjan Osha. 
official intimidation and harassment now that our friend are uh, in prison. Uh, from my personal experience is being tracked by law enforcement and being charged within a public assembly, assembly law. Uh, I got two charged and in the big picture, the government is abusing the emergency decree on the pretense of COVID-19. It also utilizes various laws such as Le Majeste Article 112, uh, Sedition Article 110, and two of activists, including uh, Kun Francis, uh, are being charged due to violation of the Queen. The strategy of law enforcement is to issue slap suit, strategic lawsuit and gets public participation. This is the burden actors and the call uh, with this is a burden activist with the cause of legal defense until they abandon their movement. This is what happening now. And but this past one year, we we get an achievement too. Not only like um, abuse, uh, political awareness of the people are increasing. Evident, uh, in evident from the number of people listening on the protest speech, speeches and the number of people t taking the protest on the street with, with for the last year increased every passing day. And also in, the, uh, in social media, we got, um, we got a pet, pet form, pet form like um, the Royal Market in the Facebook. It's called Royal Market Group. We got two million, two million uh, user uh, Facebook account in that. Um, can you please uh, describe the Royal Market Place? Yeah, it's a Facebook page that uh, uh, lead by Prof Professor Pawin and sometime with uh, Ajahn Somsak Jem Tirasakun. And uh, attempts of redraft constitution, you might saw like we got uh, almost ten. Uh, I know. We got hundred thousand names on the signatures as asking for the constitution of be redraft. People are coming more aware strategy of nonviolent resistance in protest with active discussion on what we should be the limit of nonviolent protest. And the crown the crowning achievement of movement is the protest in front of the German embassy. This play is a huge push in reforming the monarchy by sending message to the king Washira Longkorn and what we demand him to stay in Thailand. And now he is still stay in Thailand, like before he uh, go to Germany and Switzerland. So many people ask me like, where are we going? Toward creating solidarity within the movement is very important now. As previous I mentioned, has it lost steam or it is still a force to be a rec work one? For this year, the number of people are joining on the protest has been greatly reduced to COVID restriction and due to protests having no sense of direction. However, more people are actively rarely online. Discussion political history, protest tactic, and even crowdfunding of various political organizations such as Thai Lawyer for Human Rights, Prashat Thai New Network, 
etc. Due to their trialist effort in app, uh, supporting the movement. As we all know, key protesters such as Rung, Penguin, uh, Somyot, and others are still being detained in prison without charge. This violates the, princ the principle presumption of innocence that people are innocent until, until proven guilty. This is a violation of human rights. This is two of my friends, Parit and Panasaya, that now we are in the same age, 22, and we should be in university. We, we have to take an exam. We have to do more things like normal people, normal youth do, but now they are in prison. It is 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 a violation of human rights under U UN Declaration of Human Rights. Penguin has been on a ha hunger strike for 14 days. And Rung has just started her hunger stri strike today in protest of this abuse and guest political activists. Pisum Yod has even asked to the court to sentence him to date so that so that legal processing may continue. This is what happening now with my friend, with people who try to engage the government, maybe the king. This is what is happening in the movement. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Sukriya. Um, so just a couple of uh, points, when, and, and welcome, uh, we'll let you catch your breath a little bit. I know you've come from a long way. Um, you know, it's interesting that when the people who want to uh, kind of, uh, the empire, uh, the established institutions of power, when they want to keep the status quo, they seem very united, it's one, going one direction, which is to maintain status quo. Those who want to have reform, they have so many directions, they have so many objectives. And uh, so, you know, that's why I think uh, there's been some, some split and some, uh, some loss of momentum. And uh, from what you've said, uh, Sukriya, on the numbers, on the social media, clearly there are a lot of grievances, but uh, mobilizing or channeling or manifesting uh, you know, these grievances have not manifested in a clear, coherent way. So I think uh, it seems, from what you said, it's an organic uh, movement. So they're still uh, learning by doing, and uh, you are communicating, and you know, there's, there's some future there that I don't know where it will go. Um, so thank you very much for that. Let me let me uh, uh, bring in Kun Kun Bun Gernund Pao Tong, and his uh, uh, nickname is. Uh, Francis, and uh, I'll just say, I, he's not a student here, he's a student at Mahidon University, so he's come from a bit uh, out of town, and uh, uh, I've only talked to him a couple of times before, but what's been striking is that uh, he's really a Thai bred, uh, Thai born, Thai bred, but with extraordinary linguistic talents, and, and, you, and please tell us a little bit, maybe 15 minutes or so of uh, your experiences, I know you've been charged with 110, but uh, uh, don't have to talk about that, talk about anything you like, but maybe just 12 to 15 minutes, your observations and your experiences of this youth-led protest movement, uh, where it has been, uh, where it is now, and maybe where it's going, you know, is there some split within, what were the causes of the split, and, and so on. Please. Right. Um, good morning, Your Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you may well know now, my name is Francis, and may, and that is not my real name, that's my nickname. My name is Bun Genun Pao Tong. And yes, I am a student at Mahidon University International College, and I studied in the international relations field. So it seems a bit weird as a person like me, whose discipline uh, entirely focus on the international events as well as the affairs of the world. And now 
I found myself in the domestic uh, politics of this country, and I found myself in a cleavages upon which could result in my immediate loss of freedom. <laughs> so a bit, a bit about my, back, my background in particular. Uh, I used to organize one of the protests in, in Mahidon University in Salaya campus. It's, if, for those of you who do not know, it's 40, uh, 40 kilometers uh, to the west of Bangkok. And, and apparently, Mahidon University isn't exactly known for its political um, acumen as of late. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, the latest political protest in Mahidon um, a couple of years back was during the PDRC uh, anti Ying Lak Chinawat government protest. And that was then. And it was the very new thing for me to actually become one of the organizers of the student led protest on that fateful day of uh, February 25th, 2020. And then since then, I was regarded as one of the protest leaders uh, who were organizing during that time. And then after the second phase, which happened during July 2020, I began to face myself away as a supporter, as a side, as a side, um, how should I say it, as a side figure. It's more like I'm doing logistics. We are supporting. We are trying to help in uh, help with many people if we can. And then on, and then afterwards, after I um, quitted the group, <laughs> I, I quitted with the organizer group that we were at with Mahidon University students. So I decided to change my tax into a more international based events, which is in, which involves with China and its and its so called one China policy. We were at that for the moment until on the October 14 of last year, we joined the the na the na uh, the protest upon which were started at the democracy monument to the government house, and unfortunately, I was caught up in a royal in the so-called royal motorcade incident, which resulted in my immediate prosecution on the section 110. Now. The background on Section 110 includes with um, if you have the intent to intent or to planning to harm the Queen's and the heir apparent or slash presumptive liberty, you could result in a very hefty um, 12 to 20 years of imprisonment. And if you found your, and if they found you guilty of trying to assassinate those two people, well, you get executed very quickly. And the prospect of being 21st, uh, 20 year old, uh, 21 year old, facing with that heavy prospect of losing my freedom or possibly my, li my life is very uh, well, uncomfortable to say the least. But I try my best. And as of late, I try to make every day worth it. Now, as to the questions that I put forward by Dr. Titinan earlier, as to how has this movement kind of go uh, for the last while and how it will go from here onwards. And to me, I have to say very say to you very candidly, I'm not sure if it's gonna go, go better or for worse. It depends on many factors. It depends on what will government, how will government act, how will the people react, how will the international community react as well. There are so many variables. But what I can pretty say for sure is this, that we cannot expect, we, we cannot, well, exactly expect what will happen next. You know, there's no clear line, there's no clear, that strong, definitive way to say for sure what will happen to the protest. In the end, what will happen? In the end, it's up. It is really up to the people. The people like us, the people like uh, Sukriya, and the people out there who are still um, fighting, and who are still standing on their own principles, and trying their best to make their voice heard in this dying democracy. And to be fair, I have to say, I mean, this movement is not really without, you know, per. 
well, I wouldn't say it's perfect. There are a lot of infighting, to be sure. Yes, there are a lot of conflicts between groups, and I could attest to my own as that as well. But that doesn't mean we do not share the same goal. We share the same vision of which we want to see people breathe and live freely, and without no government control. Um, I may have said that. Uh, I may have phrased it wrongly, but let me put it in, in this way: that we want to live free, breathe freely, and that we want a happy life, a better life than what we are, uh, what we are currently having right now. A lot of economic inequality, social inequality, as well as political inequalities, as of which we have seen the opposition parties trying their best, fighting for our rights, for our cause in parliament. And yet at every turn, it seems that they cannot do anything about it. And to that end, I, will have, I only have this to say. For any, for any nations whose government is trying to suppress this cause, the reformist cause, the democratic cause, in at every possible way, I can only say for sure it will not end well for that government. It will not certainly end well for what happens. I mean, if you look at history, we can certainly see that it is a trend. I mean, let's say, I'm not sure if the American ambassador, uh, American charge affairs are here, but it's okay. Uh, if we look back to the American history, right before the revolution, the, uh, the men who gathered themselves and called themselves the Continental Congress uh, drafted a petition to the king, King George III, and they asked him if they would allow the American colonists to be treated equally as an Englishman, having to allow them to be represented in their parliament. And yet, King George came back with a harsher methods, a harsher degrees of control to the American colonies. And to that end, the self-government is revoked and they became rebel and they rebelled against such uh, measures. And now we, and now what happened is that these people declared their own independence and afterwards became the United States as we see today. I'm not saying that Thailand will hate it that way. Obviously, it will be up to the people, like I said. But if the government or the institutions that kind of are presiding over a society, trying to make it harder for us to better ourselves, then it is only makes sense that we just do away with those institutions or governments. So yes, that is where I'm seeing right now. I mean, we can never exactly know for sure, but we know what will happen if we don't do, uh, if we don't allow the people their voice of concern, allowing the, the right to dissent. And that is what I have in mind. I just let me just follow up uh, to both of you, Sukriya and uh, Bun Gunund. Um, you mentioned about equality. You mentioned about uh, a better life, so maybe better prospects, better future. You, you didn't mention you didn't mention the word future, but I noticed a lot of the student leaders talk about the future. Um, what does it feel like when you have you know you mentioned these charges, and uh, it must be unsettling, right, uh, to be living, go to school, go to university, and then have uh, charges and you don't know uh, about your own safety, whether you'll be free or something will happen to you. Um, what, what is that like uh, day to day? Just a very quick. Well, as a matter of fact, actually today is probably, will probably be my last day of freedom because uh, tomorrow I will have to go to the attorney general's office and they have already told me of the decision for me, for them to prosecute me with such a case. And now as, well, the case will go to court, and now it com only comes down to whether I am allowed to bail or not. If I am bail, well, I'm okay. If I'm not, I'll be in jail. So the prospect of that is now becoming a re almost a reality. Do, do you feel that over the past year, you and your um, friends and fellow protesters have been more radicalized? Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
I mean, moving to a, a more extreme measure, I would say yes, but that doesn't mean without context, you know. I mean, in the end, this government has tried to pressure us in a way which we have now been forcing to take a more extreme way. In the end, we take an extreme way, maybe, yes, but that is not entirely our fault. It's the fault of the government, which does not listen to the people. And in that case, they have the right to be extreme. Okay. Um, my charge is not necessary. It's only public assembly law. But uh, what is necessary is it's, it's tough to spend time happy. Like when you know now your friend, like more than 10 people are in prison and someone is like, you know, unpredictable about the court or the justice. And it's pretty hard. Like uh, last night I cried uh, like two hours. Because I, I saw uh, Parit and other fr and other friend in in the court, they cannot even talk to his mom without the permission of the court. This is tough to like when you ha uh, have a good lunch, have a good meal, and you know now your friend are hunger strike. It's it's very tough, and it's it's. Tough too when you don't know like um, on the uh, the the case of German embassy that my friend uh, are being charged and also Francis tomorrow and also Pika Shai right. This is this is our friend. Everyone like we know uh, not only in movement but we know each other in in the real life and we know that we. Ha we can't spend time like normal people than what is make me cannot spend my time like normal or thinking something without like concern about my friend. Okay, thank you very much. So one of the slogans that you guys have is uh, free our friends, right? That's one of your slogans. Um, we'll come back to you both. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll come to Professor Wingrat now. Professor Vinrat uh, Nedipo is the Deputy Dean for Student Affairs at the Faculty of Political Science. She interacts with a lot of young people and uh, a lot of the students here. And what do you think, uh, Professor Vinrat, uh, you know, the, the movement over the past year, uh, we have all been following it. Uh, and then early this year, maybe it lost momentum a little bit. And then uh, March 24th, it kind of, uh, I think March 24th was a significant day for a lot of these young protests. Uh, protesters because they, they saw that actually they still had some traction even though before they were demoralized you know they thought that maybe they lost steam this is it but uh, you think this is going to be a new a new round you pick up uh, Professor Vingrat what do you uh, how do you see over the past year what would you say okay thank you very much Tantitinan your excellencies good morning everyone um, I was born in last century just like uh, most of you here and um, so I like to step in and uh, share my experience with this generation of being born in this century. I would call them digital natives. And I'm not sure whether I would uh, answer Dr. Titinan's uh, question that well, but um, I like to share with you my close observation with these students. Uh, although my hearts are with you guys, most of the time and I really have um, deep empathy to everything that happened but today I would like to step away a bit and speak as if you know um, a, a close friend a good friend a good uh, observer um, um, first I would like to talk about the overview of this digital native generation and the pursuit of democracy and I would like to point out what the problem is. And then secondly, I will move to the particular movement of this Thai youth movement. Um, first, I would like to talk about the connectivity in uh, social media among the digital, digital natives. I think uh, most many people talked about it, 
but I would like to start from my own observation. Um, I would I begin. Let's begin with a story. Uh, last year, uh, one of my students had a crisis in life. Uh, I am in charge of student affairs in my faculty, political science. Uh, she was crying the whole time. She had to deal with legal process. She had to deal with her mental problem. She even threat to commit suicide with her uh, right wing uh, family. Of all these things, she was crying the whole time in my office. And there was another person sit next to her and she was uh, consoling her. She was um, cheering her up and hugging her and giving her comfort. Then after things settled a bit, I asked, was that your roommate? Was that your classmate? She said, no, Ajahn, we met on Twitter. Oh, and uh, um, this is the first day that I meet, met her. So they are, so you, but you seem to be very close, I asked. And she said, oh yeah, of course, she followed me for some months. How many months? A few months, I think. But how do you know she's your good friend? Because she retweeted my tweet and she liked my tweet. Therefore, she agree with most of my ideas and share my idea with others. So we are good friends, Ajahn. It enlightened me a great deal that human connectivity in these digital natives are totally different. Friendship, connection, organization, um, where I belong to, faculty of political science, that's it. Because I was born in last gen uh, century when Sukriya introduced herself she co-found how many groups already? Six, like trees and joy, like several groups already. That's so different. And, and I think um, uh, drawings from this uh, example and many other events that I, I was close to these students, I think we are now in an era of a crash between a digital native who were born in this century and a different form of human connectivity with uh, the old institutions of democracy that decide actually two centuries ago and was consolidated in the second half of last century. So, and they are pursuing a democracy. They, they move to have a better democracy in this country, but they are totally for the, the, their connectivity is based on totally different uh, social organization in what um, democracy is based on. I don't know, maybe uh, leave it for the world thinker to think of a new form of government, new form of ruling, new form of uh, social settlement, new form of social organization to cope with this uh, generation of uh, digital natives. Um, then I let's look into what digital natives are performing in their everyday life. They have been thinking hard about the contents rather than the members of that group. Like when we woke up going to school in our old days, we were thinking of our friends in our group or to play soccer, to play uh, other sports or to discuss with a working group. But these students, they were thinking about the contents, not a member of their groups then the contents that to, to share, to have a lot of shares, to have a lot of lies. So the contents must be striking, must be interesting, must be exciting. And they are, they're concerned about followers, but they never have even a leader. They do not have leaders in this kind of human connectivities, but they count followers. And they connect and disconnect within a click. Uh, one day she joined a gender a platform of uh, gender equality and the next day she probably paid much more attention to mob fest that she introduced like having a kind of festival in the mobs in the rallies and so in one click so in a, in this way there is no long-term alliance let alone the permanent alliance there is no um um, organization that would go together in one direction. So, and every content must be exciting, 
must be a kind of new recovery, including a reviewing of our own wing. Like if I have inside information and I disclose, you know, something that my main, uh, her nickname is my mint. My mint had done um, wrongly. It would be very exciting new because she's the well-known leader of Jula Group. And if I, you know, someone in the Twitter and just, you know, reveal something, some secret of her, that would be exciting. And then I would have more followers. So this is how uh, these digital natives thinking every day. And um, so a lot of contents uh, consists of new recovery, including, you know, the same uh, alliance, same friends, uh, something about a friend, secret about a friend, frustration, uh, these are main contents. Why the democratic organization let alone military organization, police organization, or even academic organization as we are sitting in, is about leadership, a form of leadership, a form of communication, and oftentimes hierarchical communication. And having long-term alliance, or not alliance, but a goal-driven uh, group of people that uh, having some kind of confidence, confidence um, uh, secrecy or having trust and a kind of information. Sometimes I, I know something I couldn't say it because I want to save the face of my peers, my friends. I want to save uh, my dean. I want to save my, uh, the, 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 the name of my faculty. But these digital natives, they do not think about that because their connectivity is not about organization. You know, I probably had to lie in order to protect uh, my department. Um, in a higher level or of these things. So a lot of time, we are not really free. We abide together with these institutions. So the, these are different worlds and why democracy is about institutionalization. Whether the country would be regarded as good uh, democratic country is how level of institutionalization is and is about participation would come in the form of party institution. He takes years and years to talk to voters in order to form members of party, in order to form policy of the party. And policy, policy platform of the party wouldn't come easily. It would come from collecting demand of people, spend a year or more than a year to form the demand and then put together in the parliament in the form of representative. It takes a long time to do, uh, to participate in a democratic organization institutions. And as it happened in Brexit, happened in US elections and a lot of movements elsewhere, social media play a crucial role and it went faster and the connectivity is so totally different. And uh, the speech inside the parliament seemed to be outdated when you compare with the Twitters and the, uh, you know, the policy that you form in order to um, uh, make the cabinet to to uh, administrate the policies to, to be out or outdated compared to what you uh, have been discussed in uh, social media. Then I should leave this aside. Probably it's about the time that this century they are seeking a new form of uh, government that ensure liberty, ensure freedom, ensure equality as you wish, but probably different form, you know, what we are, what we were born to and grew up, you know, to, 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 to pursue or to really uh, advocate on having a good uh, democratic institution. So drawing from that uh, aspect, I would like to scope down to this youth movement in Thailand. Um, um, I think um, many people suggest them from the beginning to organize. To organize, I don't mean to organize an event, to organize some festival or to organize a rally, to make exciting, you know, demand in order to learn more people, to make a new recovery in rally in order to make more people to participate. But I mean to organize uh, your organization, to have an organization, because uh, you are fighting against institutions that has been organized for years. 
for a hundred years at least, and in this country, police, militarily, let alone the monarchy and bureaucracy, you know, and a group of aged, aging people who organize in like group, they really have, you know, one goal to maintain the status quo, like uh, Jan Titinan just said. So how to having your advantage of commanding uh, digital world and uh, to seize the future, and we are in our generation are losing the future. How you take that advantage of that and connect and fight against these very much organized institutions? That's the key. And I think um, I, 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 I don't have suggestion, you know, how to begin. Uh, it's quite difficult. And I think this is the first time in Thai, in Thai history of uh, resistance that they are not influenced by the socialist, former socialist activists. You know, I do believe that in 90s, uh, a lot of uh, former Communist Party members who were disappointed from the Communist Party uh, joined the NGO and participated in the progressive movement in the 90s that a lot of professors studied on uh, uh, social movement and uh, civil society in Thailand. And that caused uh, put pressure on the reform that we had 1997 constitution. And also uh, in a red shirt movement, yellow shirt movement, they not only sing, you know, the old left wing songs, but they also uh, having some kind of uh, organization that they uh, derived from uh, socialist organization that very strong. So this movement never had this uh, left-wing uh, influence, which is very good. But when, we, when they start to have like some form of a socialist idea, they did not have socialist uh, organization at all. So they split, they, in one click, they just uh, found a new group. They just have uh, so many groups, you know. I don't want to say much because I think they already said about that, and that's the main challenge. They, I probably, where to begin? I probably would uh, take Ajahn Sitinan's suggestion when he, at his, in his uh, article, he wrote for Bangkok Post, you know, just step back and try to organize. I, I think you don't know how to organize because you are always thinking about the content in, um, in uh, the platform, social media. Probably start from sitting down, just like this, you know. This is all <laughs> the last century form of uh, connectivity. <laughs> and sitting down and discuss, and just probably you would fight against each other, as I witnessed a lot, and you would find common ground. Maybe, maybe a kind of uh, abstract, like um, freedom, or better life, better economy, better government, whatever but find a common ground and just set a goal and do some goal-driven like uh, old form of organization and you use advantage of, you know, new form of connectivity. And probably uh, what I mean by uh, having network old form doesn't mean totally old, but uh, you probably have to think about connect yourself with political parties, especially opposition party, academic. Of course, we have uh, our personal uh, um, a connect, connection and relationship, but uh, we do not form the formal organization yet. And so uh, uh, the goal must be to organize in order to um, utilize the old platform to influence the existing institutions. And that would be one way to um, break through this uh, going nowhere situation. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Professor Brina. May I add a uh, bit? No, no, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Sure. Um, yeah, it's interesting what you said about the, uh, what the two generations uh, uh, in play, right? So the, the Gen Y millennials and then, uh, and then the, the digital natives uh, more recently. And they came of age and became politicized maybe I think in the, in the last decade or so, especially the last six, seven years, um, interesting what you said about the, the social media, the influencers and all the followers. And, you know, we used to be concerned with market shares 
and I was like, social media shares, how many followers you have. Um, yeah, I think, let me come to Kunjatron now. Um, Ajay Mingrat, on the digital dimension, the digital activism, do you think that the government, the state, uh, is keeping up? You know, because it, it, it goes different ways. It goes two-way street. Are yeah. they keeping up? I think they try to do online, you know, like I.O. They try to combat with you guys online, but they couldn't do much. I mean, they couldn't be uh, that successful. But everything operates on-site. So they are keeping up with something on-site, like employing violence against them wherever they go. That's why they reduce number. Although they could not, you know, reduce anything in your ideology or numbers of people that follows this kind of uh, ideologies. But I think they are successful on site. So how to fight against them on site is the big challenge that uh, you guys have to do. Yeah. Thank you. Kun uh, Jatarun Chai Sang has seen a lot. I think that uh, he's one of the very few Thais who has seen over the decades Thailand's um, political ups and downs political tra trajectory from the early 1970s as a student activist himself uh, in Chiang Mai at Chiang Mai University. And then uh, um, he was uh, under persecution in the mid 70s. And then eventually he um, uh, entered the political arena and became uh, elected uh, member of parliament and uh, a cabinet member in different capacities, including a former uh, education minister. So Khun I, I I'll just put it, in two ways, as a way of uh, introduction, you must see some parallels during this period and in your time, in, you know, in the analog time, in the early 1970s. This is a, uh, the, you know, one time when uh, told a story that, uh, you know, that the military dictatorship had been overthrown in October 1973, and they didn't know about it in Chiang Mai. He didn't find out until the next day, he had to go down to the, uh, the, the town center to make a telephone call. Uh, and then found that, okay, they actually won. But uh, in the mid-70s, there was a lot of um, uh, you know, instability. It was a tumultuous period. And then it led to the 1976 kind of uh, crackdown and a right-wing coup. So the entire democratic experiment and open space was just shut in 1976. Do you see any parallel like that here, uh, uh, first of all? And then second is a way of uh, introducing you. Um, so Kun Jadron has been with uh, uh, the Tyrak Thai Party in the past and the Tyrak Sashat Party. And, uh, uh, and you know, he has, uh, I think, uh, a future, uh, future path in, in, the, the, in politics and the electoral arena. Do you see that, you know, in your experience from student activism, finding your way in politics to elected representation in parliament. But do you see, do you have still some hope that the parliamentary access and channels can still play a role and provide a way forward? Or do you think that maybe parliament now is being more restrictive uh, and controlled? Uh, and, you know, we, there's even uh, rumors that there could be election coming up soon and that there may be... Uh, the, the, the government will form a new party and uh, now that they're more confident of winning the election and then they'll be, a, you know, have majority control in parliament and that'll be kind of how it will be. What do you think, Kunjat Ron? Good morning. Thanks for having, having me here again. Uh, the first question, to the first question, uh, do I see the pa parallel between the the movement now, the situation now, and and that in the past? Uh, I see some similarities as well as some differences. As as you just said, I had to go in town of Chiang Mai to to wait to make a phone call uh, back home that time, and when we were were students, it's very difficult very difficult to to talk to one another. We have to travel to Bangkok to join a meeting in at Thammasat or at the St National Student Center or something like that. Uh, so it's uh, harder to, to connect to one another. Uh, 
takes a lot of time. I had to wait um, probably more than six to nine hours before I knew that there was some there was a massacre at Thammasat University on October 6, 1976. But uh, we did communicate, we did organize, which is the point that Jan Vyangrat just, just mentioned and, and made some, some suggestion. Uh, the student movement then were quite organized. We discussed before we make a decision. But uh, some, some other similarities is that uh, after becoming very popular, supported by a lot of people because we, we the student, student movements in 1976 were movement against dictatorship and demand that the country as a constitution. And then after, after the, gov the military government was overthrown, but people enjoy their liberties. They can voice for their problems. And then student movement were, were uh, supported by a lot of people for a couple of years. But later on, the, there was some impassion with the with socialism and even some with communism and also some uh, set up from the from the the government or the state then to to create uh, hatred toward toward students so student movement then became to to a large extent isolated alienated from, from the public and it become very fragile for the attack from, from the conservatives and then the, the state, ending up with the massacre and a coup on October 1976. Now, the student movement becoming, is becoming isolated or not? That's to some extent, some extent. But still, it's very different because the issue is different. The issue about communism, socialism, is, is very, very extremely radical. Now the issue like reform of the monarchy Actually, it's, it's not an abolishment of monarchy. And, and they, still, they still insist, the students still insist that they want the constitutional monarchy, a democracy, which is the king as head of the state, but under the constitution, which is very, very common knowledge of uh, people in the past 50 or 70 years, 80 years, that everyone is under the constitution. But probably the, the, the issue became very controversial and very uh, caused some or quite a number of people seems to uh, feel that they, they don't want to, to get involved with the movement anymore because this, this is the, the unprecedented phenomenon, historic one, that, uh, that the issue has been discussed publicly and a lot of people are in, involved. But this kind of issue, even though it's, it's kind of, kind of uh, isolate the student movement from, from the general public. But it will not be erased or wiped out because of the content. It's, 
in correspondence with in accordance with the with the the a democratic system so there's some differences here the the student movement in 40 years ago ended up with the massacre a coup and then a lot of students flee to the to the forest and there was some uh, armed struggle for three to five years before it ended it ended not because of the, the efficient suppression not because the government then killed all the student leaders or students who went to the, the forest but there was some compromise there was some room for dialogue and they allow the government then allow all the dissent to come back and live in the same society peacefully not because because of the suppression i mean there was some some prosecution some cases in the court in the military court with no lawyers but at the end there was an amnesty for everyone because actually the students then didn't do anything wrong but they they granted amnesty and then they they granted some they they had some granted some some immunity so that says that that ended the 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 deep conflict of that that uh, the, of the society at that stage and then we go on with a new stage of of uh, trying to go back to to democracy this this one the student movement now is facing unjust prosecution harassment and so on the arbitrary arrest and detention with no bail which is unconstitutional this constitutional thailand's constitutional now saying that thus a person might be detained but to not granting a bail can only be done when it is it is apparent that the the suspect might flee or might escape and that's it full stop nothing else no other reasons to detain a person a suspect without bail but now the court is using some other reasons like they are afraid that the students the, the suspect might uh, commit some offense again it is like the court has already decided or judged that what the students said on the stage was illegal in my case took me six year and six months in the in the court military and criminal court only the last three months that the judges really know what is the accusation is about and only two months before the conviction the judge knew what i defend myself so how can a judge make a decision that what the student said on the stage is illegal or not but the way the court is treating students is as if they believe or they have already decided judge that 
the students commit illegal uh, offense. So students are facing with arbitrary arrest, detention with no bail, charges to harsh to severe charges, with disproportionate, disproportionate punishment, even harassment at residence while traveling and so on. This is this is unconstitutional. Several 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 measures are being used are actually illegal. But they continue doing this. What is this going to lead to? I would say this this will lead to more more harassment, more suppression, more unjust measures against the student while they they the government fi find that the the to use your term the student movement is losing the steam or it's not no longer a major force of the movement. Then they will take this opportunity to suppress further, which is which will will result in a, a deeper conflict and uh, disastrous consequences consequences in my opinion. So so we as a you know people who pro democracy people people who want this country to become a democracy and an international community are like i think we need to need to make sure that that all of the prosecu prosecution must provide students with due process they should be protected as uh, their, their, their right for expression should be protected. And if they are going to be prosecuted, they, they, they need a fair, fair procedure. This is very universal, but, but now they are not, they are not uh, having all of this. When I said the student movement seems to, to be isolated or isolate themselves, I think this is not the end of the whole, the whole story. If you look back about a year ago, student movement gained momentum and support from, from a lot of people because the issue they raised was Poor uh, government with poor performance, corruption, nepotism. They see that the the they saw the role of independent organizations. They see that the two hundred fifty senators voted for the prime minister, and so that was against the voting wishes wishes of people in the election. Then they call for constitutional amendment. So General Prayut as Prime Minister to resign, this dissolution of the House, and general election, constitutional amendment. A lot of people support that. Then the turning point was when they focus on the demand number three, right? But uh, I think the other demands and points of demand, like government, step down, prime minister, or change the government, and amend amendment of the constitu constitution are still there. There's still big problems of this country. The 
government performance towards the economic situation. Thailand is um, is is the the economy with the slowest rate of growth, and now still slowest rate of recovery. Poor, bad, uh, very inefficient policy on on vaccination and vac vaccine passport and opening the economy. Very is is among the slowest. The government and coalition parties broke the promise that they would amend the constitution. A lot of people are thinking that we need to amend the constitution. But there are some student leaders who also believe that they should raise these kind of issues. But by nature, the uh, the demand number three would dominate all other issues. How you can, when we said, we said organize, to organize, it's not only to organize physically, organize the organizations, but to organize the strategy, the issues, the demands. How can 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 the s different issues be conducted by different factions, different groups of students? Further, furthermore, political parties, NGOs, some other groups of people who want to see who want to see the democratization move on, might want to participate. How can we kind of align ourselves and then let different organizations play different roles to the same goal, and that's the democracy. I would say that to, to the, the Later, uh, later question of, of Kun Titinan is the parliament is now is quite restricted because, because there are senators to, inter to, to, to pass an important law. You need to sit together with the senators to elect or select the prime minister, sit together with senators as well. So the role of parliament is restricted. It's different from in the past. But still, the House of Representatives still count. Political parties have connection with their supporters, where, where their uh, supporters as voters and Thai voters, more than, major, more than half of Thai voters, experience the benefit of, of the, the election, what we call edible, edible democracy. Political parties form a policy, introduce that, decla declare that during the election campaign, and then implement them. People experience this. So political parties still still are some some forces that should be should be employed and should should be allied with with either student movements or 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 uh, movements conducted by other group of people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kapun Chaturan. You mentioned uh, dialogue and compromise in the, the late 70s. You know, after 1976, uh, a lot of people, a lot of students were jailed and uh, many fled to the jungles to, in an armed struggle. But in 1980, the government of uh, General Prem, they issued a, an order called 66 uh, 2523. And that was a very famous uh, uh, compromise measure. Uh, it was an amnesty. 
Uh, do you see any kind of a what would a dialogue and compromise in this environment at this time? What would it look like? Is there any anything that you can imagine that as a way of a compromise dialogue similar to the amnesty we saw in 1980 that allowed Thailand to move on into the 1980s uh, power sharing, uh, semi-authoritarian, semi-democratic, with elections but with the military's role uh, and a unelected prime minister. And then that went on to the 1990s, even more opening in the 1990s, more democratic. And then the last two decades, of course, uh, from opening, opening, it became more closed and even greater closure we're seeing now. So in the late 70s, do you see anything now that what would it look like, dialogue, compromise? I would say the government need to start with the the uh, upholding or adhere adhering to 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 rule of law or prosecution or measures towards against the towards the the student movement should adhere to rule of law to start with. And then dialogue. There need to be forums or fora for the dissents to to discuss with people in in the government at the at the uh, with the civil servants officials, and then people in the government. Maybe we'll need the academics to to be involved, and this kind of forum can, should should be should be held uh, from time to time. Allow people to 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 explain their opinion, their demand, then discuss. We have lost one of the opportunities for for people with different opinions to, to come and sit together and discuss things when we dropped the constitutional amendment just last week. If we allow the constitutional amendment to take place and if we did, did not specify that the constitutional amendment must not be involved with the institu royal institution at all. But on the contrary, if we allow that to be open in the constitutional amendment, then there'll be dialogue. Everything will be discussed openly, publicly, and you can, you can resolve the conflict peacefully. We have lost that kind of opportunity. But still, we can, we can, we can uh, come up with some, some other attempt, some other procedure. Okay, the, the floor is uh, open now for questions, comments, and also on online. Uh, also available. I'll just say this, we don't have a view from, uh, you know, I, I try to uh, um, invite uh, uh, professors who might have uh, more kind of views that are more aligned with the status quo, but they're not, they're not available. So I have to, I have to uh, present uh, the, the kind of the, the status quo view. And this would say that, uh, you know, it's about what we're seeing is, is about law and order and about uh, law enforcement. And there's a constitution of 2017, which has passed a referendum, which has passed a referendum. And it sets out the mechanisms and the uh, parliamentary um, uh, functions that we're seeing with the Senate and the, and the lower house. And when the laws are broken, um, action needs to be taken. You know, so, so I think that uh, the status quo view would be that uh, what we're seeing is what should be. Um, and the constitutional amendment process 
Well, it went through parliament and it didn't, it didn't come through. So therefore, uh, we have the status quo. So there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, you know, you would say the, the police are doing their job. Um, we have the, the status quo institutions would be the police, the, the, the judiciary, uh, the Senate, parliament, um, the, uh, the various institutions, anti-corruption, election commission, and uh, yeah, that's the status quo. There's nothing wrong here. That's what the, the view would be. Um, I'll leave it that. I just want to make sure that uh, that is uh, represented. Any questions and comments? I'm, I'm sorry, I keep looking at the, the digital age. I have to look at the live stream at the same time as this audience to see if there's any questions. Um, and, uh, Ambassador Kassit. Uh, well, Ambassador Kassit is also our former foreign minister uh, of foreign affairs and uh, the current senior fellow of ISIS Thailand. Uh, thank, thank you very much. I have two questions, one request, and I think two information, all in short one. The first two questions to, to the young digital age leaders of Thailand at the moment. First is that why, why don't you demand answers from General Prayut and also Kun Chuan Lee Pai, the Speaker of, of Parliament of, of the House of Representatives, your three, four demands and so on. You must demand why don't you demand the answer? Second, in your demands, I have not heard for the past few months, what are your ideas about constitutional changes or new constitution? What do you want? The reform of the monarchy. What are the reform things that you want of the institution of the monarchy, for example? Okay, so why don't you okay, demand? And second, why don't you spell out what you want? That's my question. Then one request to you and to, through you to all your friends. Please do not use bad language. Very, very bad. It is not acceptable to anyone in the Thai society. You have to be polite in your demand and be courteous to the other Thai people. Otherwise, you will have more enemies and not, not friends. And then the, the last two points is my information to you to give you some sort of encouragement. Both Kun Jaturon and myself, we are members of the ASEAN Parliamentarian for Human Rights, APHR, and I'm on the executive board. And we have set a series of statements of ed report demanding the government of General Prayut to amend the constitution. We did that long time ago for him to legitimize himself and to stop the weaponization of the law, but to have the dialogue. I think what the, this government has been doing so far is to use the judicial processes and the law and the police authorities and so on to keep on arresting you until you died on the podium politically. So they will not give you any dialogue. So that, in that sense, it's incumbent on all of us, not only you, the students, the youth, but the progressive forces of Thailand and the ambassadors here and the international community to demand to the Thai government and to the Thai parliament to open a public dialogue of what Kun Jaturon has just mentioned. And then the last one for information, I gave an interview to the Turkish TRT television many months ago. They asked me whether I sympathize with you. I said, no, it's not the question of sympathy, but it's the question of whether you do understand the question posed by the youth. And I said that your questions, the three, four, and the added questions and so on subsequently are all very valid. It reflects the sentiments of all the Thai people for the need to really have a monarchy constitutional one, a kingdom, a very democratic one. I think we have not been able to reach that the past 89 years, but you are pushing us, and I think the rest of the people would like to work with you, but in a very constructive, polite language must be used, and you have to be clear. You know, you cannot have so many diverse opinions you have to concentrate on a few which you have already done. 
and in that sense, the support of all of us for you to change and to transform the kingdom of Thailand, a democratic one. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I'll just uh, add a little bit. I, I know that your thoughts are racing ahead of you and you, you want to say something. And uh, you'll be next. Uh, yeah, but uh, what Tantul uh, Kasit, Mbasa Kasit has uh, uh, raised, I think, uh, is, is common in the minds of many older people. Right? I think about, uh, first, if, you, if this is not the, the right system and you want to change, what would the destination look like? I think that's, uh, there's been different versions and, and uh, in addition, in terms of broadening, you know, this is a youth-led protest movement, but it has stayed within the youth-led, more or less, you know, and uh, maybe it's very deep, but it's not very wide. And part of the reason, I think, is the methods. And Tan uh, Kasit, Ambassador Kasit, uh, for, former former minister, said the, the, I think the use of profanity, vulgarity, the language, uh, is one example of how the movement does not broaden. So, um, yes. So, thank you for your questions, um, Ambassador. And I think you made some valid points here. And ideas of how my um, my colleagues think about this um, const the constitutional um, amendments as well as the reformation of the monarchy well first of all I said I agree with you that all of this process about going about trying to manage this huge demands has to be in a very calm and civilized manner but let's take a step back a bit why are they making the noises, the profanities, and, uh, and with all that in the first place? So we have to recognize that the people are angry, that we cannot really uh, ignore the fact that this, the, the monarchy-related uh, code, including Section 112, has been used against a, a principled uh, dissent before. We can see that with the case of Kun... Uh, Sulak Sivalak, no? Kun uh, Sivalak, which he was a very, uh, he was a very uh, articulated Siamese intelligentsia, intelligentsium, and, and he was once brought uh, to a case of which he said something about King Nalesuan, um, and then the case was brought to him on Section 112. In the end, he get, uh, well, the case was a non story. But anyway, so to say that, well, I would understand that some of the old, uh, some of the conservatives Thai who might have, and uh, might have agreed with us in 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 reforming the monarchy the aspects of it, might have been put off by what what have been saying about the monarchy, you know, in a, as of late. I mean, I can I can understand that, but I think in the end we we may we may have to try to. On both sides, we may have to kind of sympathize with, both, with each other, like understand the points of view, understand not to, I mean, I'm not saying that we should kind of allow it, but we should understand what happened, understand how it came to be. And that is the word, understanding. And to that end, sir, I would say that the process of which we want to push forward with the constitutional amendment is to allow us to have this E with equal living, uh, playing fields with between the opposition parties as well as the government party. And, and right now, we are not having any of that at all. We are not playing on the equal field. We have the senators in, in which they have been trying to quash every, every, try, every attempt to, to bring about the constitutional amendment reforms and all of that. And now... I think what we want with the constitutional amendments uh, demand is that, for, first of all, we want to kind of a reset everything to that instance. We want to reset everything. Well, the government resigns, the house dissol dissolves itself, and then we have to come up with a, with a, we have to do away with so, with, with many of the, of the, of the system, systematic um, 
rules that we have in place, including even in even our electoral system, the roles of the Senate, the roles of the House of Representatives and all that. We have to come up with that. It's not just an amendment, sir. It's about trying to draft a new constitution altogether. And what and that is what we're trying to push. Drafting, uh, uh, trying to amend the constitution so that it would allow a new constitutional drafting council. For, and then and then at that point, we will begin, we, we can begin to discuss on the on a more delicate and sensitive issues uh, on on that matters like the civil civilian military relations the, the 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 separations of power the checks and balances as well as the institutional role of the monarchy itself i mean i mean we have to say that the institutions of monarchies still play a role here but in the end we have to decide whether if we want the role to, to be in a way that we want it to be. We want, it, we want the monarchy to stay where it, where it is. We don't want them to meddle in with politics or to engage in these vicious political, you know, behind the scenes acts, which would result into another uh, erosion of, the, of democratic institutions again. And that is what we're trying to do. We want, to, we want him to stay that way. Just don't do anything. If, the, if there's a saying which means the king can do no wrong, it means that the king can do no wrong because the king cannot do anything. And that's the principle here. And that is what we want to see in that way. Sukriya, so, would you have anything to, to add to uh, the yeah. methods of the past year? Uh, have you learned anything, the movement? Uh, I think, like, Francis uh, answered it a lot. But one thing that I want you all to know that in i would call it the tone politing when we are uh, we are say something that unacceptable when like when um we are we are human then we have anger we are angry then look what the government made us do I'm a university student and I don't want to do uh, make uh, any demonstration or protest. I don't want to be impolite. But look what we got. Like our friend Kun Wan Chalom that uh how do you explain that? Yeah, and he like forced uh, disappearing in the Cambodia, um, suspect by the Thai government. Like one of our friends are disappeared. Then how how should we say to the government like please uh, return our friend or like, sometimes? Uh, but I know the generation are different. Then our generation uh, say something like to the straight point, but in, in uh, the conservative perspective, my, don't like what, what we have said, but it's, it's, the, it's the true that what we said. But sometimes it's my impolite, but we need more, we need you to more understand on us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor is open again for questions, comments. I think there were a couple of hands. This one, any, anyone else? We might take this uh, as a round. Okay. Uh, Kun Frank. Did you have a question too, Gwen? Okay, we'll take, we'll take both. Uh, Frank Fu from Guangming Daily, China. Uh, sorry, my question is due to Kun uh, Potong. Uh, you mentioned uh, briefly uh, in your presentation about Man China policy. I think as a student majored in uh, international relationship, you must be, uh, I'm sure you are also aware of uh, how complicated the like uh, Taiwan issue or Hong Kong issue it, it is. So my question is, uh, in the Thai, like a milk, milk tea alliance, in the, there are some uh, activities. So in, in this um, movement, is it because in, in Taiwan and Hong Kong, there are some activists who support Thai movement and you share the, the kind of uh, democratic 
uh, spirits, so that in return, the Thai youth movement, or especially there are certain groups that are in return supporting their movement, or is it that you are indeed supporting the kind of uh, like uh, Taiwan independence or even Hong Kong independence? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll just take one more question. We'll take Gwen's question too. I want to make this the last round. That's a good question about the the um, significance and to what extent you know the the Milk Tea Alliance is a force to be reckoned with. Uh, the Three Finger Salute, for example. Kun Gwen, a senior fellow and also uh, just past FCCT president and uh, Nikkei Asian Review uh, editor at large. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, Ajahn. Um, First, I just wanted to say it was uh, fascinating, uh, all of your uh, presentations, but uh, particularly from our two um, uh, protest representatives. I, I think um, while it is uh, unfortunate, um, really unfortunate that some of the leaders are detained, it's also really good to hear other voices and your views. But one thing, as a journalist, I, I think I can say that a lot of us are... Uh, let's say, a little confused about the divergence in the movement and different offshoots. And, um, you know, while you're broadly, I think, about similar things, um, I wonder about this strong perception of disunity, different tracks, and if you see any clear and concrete prospects for more unity going forward, particularly now that leaders are um, detained. Okay, so uh, good question. Uh, first, the milk tea, and I'll open, open this up to Ajahn Rien Rat, Kun or any of you. Um, we're seeing three finger salutes in Myanmar, saw it here. Uh, of course, it comes from the movie, uh, Hunger Games, but uh, it's become the symbol of, uh, you know, the, the three finger salute uh, of the protest movements across uh, Asia, different societies now. Um, so, do you think it has a is there a solidarity, not just in Thailand, but across among the younger, the youth and digitalized youth movements? Um, thank you for your question. And again, I mean, the issues of which revolves around Hong Kong or Taiwan or even that of Tibet and Xinjiang is not, it's nothing new. It has been there since the very beginning. Am I correct? Since the 1997, um, when the British and the China and the Chinese governments signed the, the agreement of which they will hand the ter territories of Hong Kong and the new territories to to the Chinese government in Beijing, so they start. So there was there was always a concern about what will China do after, at some certain periods of time, the territory reverts back to China again. So there was a there is not just a concern. It was about it was also a fear amongst the the, the the you know the Hong Kong people saying that their democratic rights, which has been guaranteed under the British rule, is going to fade away, and then it will be replaced by the Chinese Communist Party, uh, all the machinations of it, which I will not go into detail. But I will say that the first, when the first time we we came up with the idea with the multi alliance, it was a meme, it was an internet joke, <laughs> to say the least. We 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 came up together because. Because some some stupid drama between Thai actors, and then it became a, some sort of a joke between the Thai with the, uh, with the Chinese um, troll accounts called themselves the Wu Mao, and then it became a split between a Thai and a, and the Chinese Wu Mao, and it became an internet meme, and it all sort of exploded everywhere. But and then and there was a and then the ideas of multi alliances kind of begin since then. It became. It started as a joke, and it began to become more of an international, decentralized, grassroots kind of a movement for people in, for people in Hong Kong as well as uh, in Taiwan and ours and Myanmar and almost and then in Southeast Asia, something like that. So, in the so in that sense, we came up with this kind of a continuation with a multi alliance. We're trying to send us send send the message of solidarity to. The Hong Kong people, because in one sense we are opposed, we oppose the 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 the, direct, the directions that the government of China has been doing since, uh, especially with the deprivation of 
democratic and human rights in Hong Kong, as well as the, 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 the allegations of human rights abuses in Xinjiang, and as well as what they are doing with the Taiwan, uh, with the Taiwan Strait, we are we opposed to the ideas of which culminated into the one China policy. We stand against that. And when the, and when the protests in uh, the October 14 protests happen, well, I happened to send one of the message to, to, to I, I happened to send a, a video message before the, 14, the October 14 protest, and then it exploded. And I might have said that I kind of benefit in some way with the multi-alliance because it became a staging ground for them, for, for my predicament, for the predicament of which happens in a real motorcade accident. But in a sense, it became a solid, a kind of movement with solidarity between Hong Kong, Thailand, Taiwan, as well as Myanmar right now has become strengthened. Now it, it is now the, 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 the bastion of the belief of democracy, human rights, liberty, as well as solidarity between peoples. And that's how I like to see it. Thank so. you. Thank you, Francis. Uh, Professor Mingrat, uh, you know, the milk tea is pro-democracy, but pro-democracy movements are not doing well. Authoritarian movements, authoritarian governments and regimes are actually resurgent. Myanmar, you know, of course, Cambodia, and Thailand, and uh, Hong Kong, um, but but could the tide turn? Could it shift the other way? Uh, what would be the, the conditions? Because one thing the Milky Alliance has in common, uh, a lot of young people, this is uh, the digital natives, and they use technology, and they have solidarity. And I, I imagine that their, their lifestyles, uh, they don't like authoritarianism because their lifestyle uh, requires mobility and freedom. W what would you say? Yeah, I agree. And I don't think uh, these students would go further to the issue of independence of uh, Taiwan or Hong Kong. I think they share some uh, experience, the movement to anti-authoritarian regime and uh, uh, advanced democratic institutions. I think that's all they, they, they ask for, I think, I guess, from my reading. And I think this is quite... Um, this solidarity is quite uh, uh, very energetic, very giving uh, uh, the movement the positive energy. I think this is good. And yeah, that probably you could just start from just multi alliance, just a very good common ground. Now let me uh, get back to Kunjatulon uh, a bit. Um, when Ajahn Titinan asked the question whether uh, this government is willing to have power sharing like we had in 90s, in 80s. And we always uh, had compromise at the end. Um, but Kujatulon said, yeah, we uh, if have to start from the government to uh, respect the rule of law, to adhere the law first. But, and, and then later, we can have uh, civilized dialogues. I like this idea. But I, what I observe is they go in the direction that they don't want to have dialogue. They think they have upper hand and they think they can crash the student down. They can literally, you know, shut everyone's demands. Yeah. Please continue, but put the microphone closer. Uh, okay. And I think, um, yeah, and that, uh, when you answer that, I agree totally. But how? I mean, I don't see this government is willing to have, you know, compromise with the students, with uh, the poor and with other groups apart from uh, militarily and themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think uh, we'll take Gwen Robinson's last uh, question as our last for, for, for the session. And I'll, I'll come to Kunjat Ron and maybe uh, uh, Sukriya. Um, in your time, in the 70s, the student activism, student protest movement must have had rivalries, right? There must be different leaders, different objectives, different organizations, different institutions. Um, what, what were, were they disunited? Were they divergent? And how, how did they manage to come together to overthrow the military dictatorship in October, October 1973? And you see, um, so maybe, maybe you can share with us a little bit about the dynamics of student movement, you know, because it's very natural. I saw last uh, August, September, suddenly we had, uh, uh, student stardoms, uh, students became 
in, they get interviewed by the New York Times, the CNN, the Time Magazine, and the different uh, personalities, different faces. And then to, after a bit, I noticed that there were some, uh, uh, maybe some, some uh, rivalries or uh, different groups and factions and kind of played into it. Uh, in your time, is this normal? Is this a learning by, learning by doing, a learning process? Different columns, different groups, different faces, different personalities. But if they have the same goal, uh, they can still achieve their objective. Yes, there are there, there differences. There were uh, several groups of students that are uh, activists and, and do a lot of activities. Uh, the activities of students started by by groups of activists has nothing to do with the student organization the, the this organization of the student like the the what do you call now is the uh, student organization of the, the each university so the the, the activities start with it groups of activists rather than the f official organization. Then there were national student center that try to, to collaborate all the major universities in the country. Then the, this, this organization at the beginning are not very strong and uh, not in the forefront of the of the movement so there are some other groups i think that they have to go farther than that so there's some conflicts some conflict some argument of course always and then we learn we learn to work together we learn to ally with one another, mm, correct uh, mistakes. The, one of the differences is the, the movement now and the activities now can be, can be done in a very short time at will, like, uh, like one student think about something, uh, one is very small group of students think think about something, they want to do something, then they do it right away on the social media. They, they can make an appointment, they can uh, announce in only two hours in advance, and then a lot of people come to the to B BTS station and gather together to, for, to, to protest. This kind of thing we couldn't do that time. You have to, you know, Make announcement two day, two days before before a demonstration. Before that, we have to discuss whether we we wa really want to hold a demonstration. Do we want to stay overnight until you know for a couple of days? We have to discuss a lot. This kind of thing, probably a bit different, but to be very well organized, to go to the in the same direction the same goal or the same strategy doesn't mean it would always be right. You might be in the wrong direction altogether. Still, right? So, so there's some trade-off. If you go together with unity in the same, very same direction, but in a wrong, dire wrong direction, raising wrong issue it can be it can it can the movement can fail too so the fact that the student movement now are fragmented has some 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 benefit also because because there can be various issues to to address you can you can integrate integrate more groups of people, people from, from all walks of life to, to join the, the, the movement. But the very crucial point is the, 
the issue, the demand, how to deal with, how to manage the issues by the student movement first. And then now probably we have to think about other group of people. They might want to exercise, they, they might want to, to, to do some activities as well. Thank you very much, Chef Kun Chaturan. Uh, Sukriya, yeah, I will give you the last word. Um, so from what Kun Chaturan said, uh, divergences and differences can, can be a good thing, can promote dialogue and better understanding. In fact, uh, going one direction too united maybe can be a bad thing if it's the wrong direction. So from what we've seen now on March 24th going forward, uh, are there some new leaders coming up and uh, are there differences uh, uh, being managed? Uh, are you reaching a, a more common understanding about the objectives? Um, that's just a valid point. Um, one past, for past one year that we have learn, learned that we have to organize and we have to talk to another group like the Labor Association or um, academic, like many. Uh, um, now, uh, I can say that we are trying to organize, trying to have more dialogue, and we are learning. And it's also the the to to um, sometimes you might think like when we are going to the the street is is a. Uh, our organizing, but it's experiments, it's experimenting too. Like is it like our activi acti activist laboratory? It's like we have to learn and learn and talk and have and know the mistake in in nowadays. Then this year, uh, I think everything will getting better. By by have more dialogue, and the point that the point that um, say uh, about the concrete demand, um, be, because of uh, because we have uh, diversity that I have mentioned it, um, that why we got our demand are changed by the time and the another group but. Finally, we try to include all of the group and blend the demand to to uh, as much concrete that I can that we can, and uh, we actually have the step for for demand. Like the first is the resign of uh, general uh the constitution and the monarchy but uh, now we are stuck about free our friend too and by the way i i think we are learning and we have learned a lot and now we have proceed and uh, all the suggestion or the question today is our lesson too thank you Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, from today we can say that uh, the, the youth uh, protest movement, Thailand's youth protest movement is organic and still learning. And we're still also looking for uh, reform and progress with uh, compromise and dialogue. Uh, so thank you very much for all our speakers and for all of you. Thank you very much.